yeah, yes, eight hours ago. <laughs> I just flew in from Guatemala. <laughs> His arms are a little tired. Um, before he left, he said, save me a couple minutes. Now, here's the thing. These are Mark minutes, which much are like Gene Spee's minutes. Um, that, that, and that's okay. Um, come on over here because we, we can come over here. You don't have to stay over in your corner right Julie, now. Julie, we might need you up here because we, we're going to use some song probably through no. this. Um, okay. We're going to be all right? Yeah. Okay. You, okay. I know three years ago when you went on a missions trip that kind of came out of nowhere. He wasn't even here when we first talked about it. God just opened doors uh, between you and, 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 and Deb to, to lead you to go on that missions trip. You went with uh, the the. With Gr Green, Greenville, Greenville Church. Church. Last year you took a group also, once again. And then this year you took a group, you and Luke Ames, and then five others also, uh, from se seven of you total, uh, from another group. And um, I know that this morning when we first saw each other, you just, your emotions are high. You're excited for what God is doing. And so uh, why don't you share a little bit of, of that with us? Because I know it's kind of a whole encompassing story, so let's try to make a sense of it. <laughs> well, first of all, for those that don't know me, um, like AA, this is why I started the, the speaking time that we did in Guatemala. Hi, my name is Mark, and I'm a sinner, saved by grace. So let's clear the air. You guys are like talking to my mom, okay? <laughs> in Guatemala, I can preach and teach boldly, and they were cheering and clapping and joyous, and, but here... You guys know me, man. You guys know the 70s. I wish some of you guys would move on so we can forget the 70s. Pam, you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> guys, it's weird. I'm a lay person. That's it. I'm no Rhodes Scholar. Um, but I'm going to try in 15 minutes to try to bring this all around. Th studying and working and allowing God to use you in a situation. Um, it might get a little bit teary. He's going to fill in or she's going to break into song. Um, it might get jubilees. I don't know where it's going to go. But out of this trip, I'll bet you I didn't have 12 hours worth of sleep. Between the time working with the teams, working with the, the adults, working with the children, people that came to the door to be, uh, to be prayed for, bringing things together in a whole program, I was just praying and praying and praying and preaching and praying and building and preaching and praying. And, and everybody kept saying, how are you going? I said, I don't know. We got in this morning at 4.30 a.m. Luke couldn't make it here today. I said, well, good, Luke, so I get your seven minutes because I only wanted two. And uh, he'll, he'll testify later. Luke Ames, let's talk about him. Don't, nobody tell him anything. That man is amazing. He stepped out of his box like you would not believe. And he doesn't want me to share it on video. But <laughs> amen to Luke. His, his, if it wasn't for Luke, we would, be, we, we would have been down and out. So let's get God in the picture. We're going to bring Luke here in a, bit, in a little bit. I'm going to fast forward through this. Diane Bickford, are you here? Pay close attention because I'm going to have to talk really fast because she can never understand me. So make notes. We'll talk later. Love you, sister. Okay. Let's back the, all the way up. Three years ago, sitting in a cornfield going, Lord, I'm tired of playing church. I've, I've been on the board. I've been a Sunday school teacher for 20 years. I've read through the Bible, back through the Bible, and then another Bible. And what else do you have for me? And the Lord revealed to me missions. Hmm, that never crossed my mind. At the same time, on the same Sunday morning, this man's reading a letter about some people in Greenville that need one more man to go, or else you're going to have to cancel the trip. And my wife, I don't know where she was sitting, but she was here. Clear as day, spoke to him, says, your husband's going to Guatemala. You better get ready. So there's first God movement one. I talk about God. I get either bowlful or teary. So we go forward. I said, okay, I come back here. I sit in a mission meeting with Diane and them back there. They tell about the letter. They tell about the people. And they need another volunteer. They're not going to go. And I says, well, I was just praying about that missions. I'll go. They said, really? I said, yeah, I'll call him. When's the deadline? Tuesday. This was Monday. So I come home. I said, honey, what do you think about me going? She says, on a mission trip? <laughs> and I went, whoa, how would you know about that? I just prayed about that Sunday. I just heard about it a half hour ago. She says, the Lord spoke to me then. God speaks to us. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. I've been studying on the Holy Spirit for about six months, not knowing where I was going to use it. It worked beautifully for the message of Guatemala. It fit right in. God is constantly willing to talk to you. So now I'm going to talk to you like you're Guatemalans. I don't know you. We're going to get personal, okay? 
First and foremost, if you want to hear from God from the studies that I've learned in my heart, share your sins. Share them with one another. Share them with a brother or sister that you trust. Share them with Jesus Christ. I didn't say God. I said share them in the name of Jesus Christ. He already knows you got the sin, so let's talk about it. Okay? If it's gossip, say, Lord, let's talk about gossip. If it's pornography, let's talk about pornography. If it's alcohol, let's talk about alcohol because there's no sense hiding our sins because he already knows we've got them. But we already know we're forgiven. But he already knows we got them. And we go back and forth and back and forth, and we never get released. I have found with most people that I've had the privilege of witnessing to in Luzerne, in the rain, or at Parmalee, in, in my daily life, that there's something, there's a log jam in there. And they can't get it out, so they can't get the freedom in Christ that they think they need. I've got Jesus going right now, so you're probably going to be fine, but stay here with me, brother, okay? Um, get it out of there. Get rid of it. And get ready to serve. Are you perfect? No. I mean, I've screwed up a lot. I've screwed up a lot in this town. But man, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I get it right, I feel really good. So I said, Lord, go ahead and use me in Guatemala. And I was scared because I'm a sinner. I didn't get it that I'm saved by grace. And I was having problems. And it took God allowing me to fall off a wall from a great distance and land flat on my back in Guatemala, laying there going, oh man, I'm in a foreign country and I'm hurt. And I did the check and God said, you're fine. Do what you do. Do what you do. That's all I heard on that very first mission trip. Do what you do. The ropes, uh, the, you, know, you guys weren't with me on the first trip. The ropes, the crowds were, were fantastic. The Jubilee that broke out in Shala uh, was fantastic. Uh, the Kuchan people that we went with, it was amazing. And I thought, man, I got this. Well, after that fall, guys, I went into a time of prayer because I was scared. You don't fall that far flat on your back on the floor and get up and walk away. And God right there in my ear going, I've got you. Do what you do. You know what to do. Do it. I went back to the hotel room and I prayed. I'm an old Baptist boy, so we're pretty conservative. I'm here before this church today. I went into a time of prayer in a language that I did not understand for over two hours. It was literally an out-of-the-body experience. I felt drifting, and it must have been loud because the maid from downstairs came up and knocked on the door to bring me out of it. I had no idea that two hours went by, and she thought there was a fight going on in the room. It was something I can't explain. I was praying in a language that I did not understand, but I knew everything that was said. And in that language, God revealed to me Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, an altar, a uh, statue, and Nebuchadnezzar. But he didn't put faces or names on it. He said, you're going to have to fight for what I want you to do. There's going to be something that's going to stand against you in what I want you to do. Do what you do. Fight. Get something done. And I didn't know where it was going. Part of that vision was a training center in Shella. This is 2017. And I was wound up. But then here come Nebuchadnezzar. Not Nebuchadnezzar the statue. We're going to call the statue Jim, okay? That's just, we'll just say Jim. Jim stood up and got in my way, caused great problems. Found out later that Jim, the statue, the, the enemy, even tried to shut me down in all of Guatemala. Went through our state pastorship. Long story, we're not going to go there because Jim's forgiven. Jim's just like I am. And we fought. And we fought hard. So we went forward. I got, so I got three. I'm seeing three things there. And seven. And Jesus kept revealing the three and the seven. I'm an old Revelations guy. I'm thinking, okay, I'm just thinking the three and the seven. He showed me the vision of what, I wanted to, of what he wanted built. And I said, Lord, if you want me to build it, give me 2020 vision. My eyes are terrible. I need glasses. But I didn't want to put the glasses on because I didn't want you to... See me in glasses, and then all of a sudden I get rid of my glasses. Oh, he just put the glasses on beforehand. But I was so confident this training center needed to be built, I went and got my eyes tested at an eye place. And in this man's desk drawer, there's a piece of paper with my eye test. And I said, Pastor Bones, if my eyes get restored to 2020, I'm going to have to fight. I'm going to cause problems because I tried to interpret the dream, the vision. I'm not going to say dream. I'm calling it a vision from Jesus Christ, okay? I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It was a vision. And I'm going to have to build it in the city of Shala uh, with Pastor Hor uh, Horatio, great friend. 
And I said, I'm going to need you to back for me that, look, this was revealed in 2017. I let it go through 2018. Because of the, the enemies fighting against me, I took 2018 off. I was a coward. Do what you do. 2019 comes along. They invite me to take a group of church people down. So I take this group. I believe seven, right, Gene? I think we had six. We took six on this group. We went down there, but we visited seven churches. It's coming around. In that time of all this and the struggle and the strife that was going back and forth between both sides, the good and the evil, three times it rose up against me. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Three times it was defeated. But we weren't getting anywhere. I wasn't getting 2020 vision. I said, Lord, I've got all of this year. Something big's going to happen this year all through 2018 and 2019. Praying about it. Gene Spees and Derek, I let them do most of the speaking on the last trip. They evangelized in seven churches, and we all got to share, but I let them carry the biggest load. Brother Gene, seven pastors from seven churches came and visited me Sunday. These people have no money. They can't travel. The little green church on the coast where I got my tattoo from the sun, still there three years later, is still on me. He come and asked for me to pray for him and his family and for you to pray for him and his family and our church to pray for him and his family. Another church from Ch Changana, his pastor came from the words that I spoke three years ago. That I, excuse me, take that back, that God spoke through me three years ago. He came and wanted prayer for his wife. In the, at the middle of a church service I was speaking at on Sunday morning, they wheeled a woman in in a wheelchair. And we interrupted the service and went to the back and, and prayed for her. And a jubilee broke out at that service. God is so powerful that he can use an idiot like me. A guy that talks too fast. A guy that can be a little bit sometimes bigger than life. But a guy that's not scared to rise up and fight. He can use you. There's a story for each and every one of you here. You have a purpose. You have a mission. You just got to realize you are free from your sin. You were forgiven in the 70th week of Daniel. You're done. Do what you do. And you're going to see great things. So as we're moving forward in this story, we did the other churches and I didn't get the miraculous things. That happened on the first trip. And it was downplayed. I'm getting closer to 2020. No sign of a trading center. No sign of 2020 in my eyes. Getting, getting bummed. And before I left on the trip, I didn't even know if I wanted to go. That's why I said, Pastor, just save me two minutes. I'd probably be announcing my last trip to Guatemala. We get down there. The seven that went. Three different churches. Shadrach, Meshach, and Benjigo. All three of them were battling. Battling one person. One statue. Jim. Same struggles I was having. Same fight, same battle. It was amazing. I was like, whoa. We had worked a probably a 10-hour day. We're all tired. We went to church. We, we spoke and sang and everything. And I know I'm jumping, but that church was so moved by the Holy Spirit when they heard that the missionary was going to be all the way across Guatemala, 4 million people, terrible traffic, terrible. They got a bus. And you wouldn't even call this thing a bus. It may be hauling melons in Florida. That's all it was. And they piled that thing, and they went all the way across Guatemala City to the church we were at that night and wanted to worship with us again. And that was, a, that was more of my upbringing, like gospel hall. You just sat there and you're quietly, blah, blah, blah. We took the roof off that church. There was praising and singing and clapping and joy. And, and the pastor, he was like, no, we don't clap. And then push he's clapping and praising. And it was, it was, it was awesome. Man. You, guys, you guys got to go. This is something you can't experience here because we're too comfortable and we're too good and everybody knows us and I don't want to celebrate. Find a mission group. I recommend, brother, going on your own is powerful, isn't it? When you don't know everybody because you count on God for everything. Everything. You're in a foreign country. There's guns everywhere. There's crime everywhere. But you never felt so safe. You never felt so comfortable. You never felt so reassured. You have blinders on. We're walking through a city streets that's not good. And the girls come up and said, did you not even hear or see them girls? You and Luke. And we said, no, what girls? The 18 to 20 years old in the short dress going, hey, guys. Hey, how you doing? Come talk to us. Come talk to us. We said, no, we didn't see no girls. Blinders on. I mean, it's, it's, depravity is bad down there, guys. It's bad. But with God's help, you can get through all this. So back to the story. Okay, we're going to jump back and forth. That's why I wanted to warn Diane. Okay, 
Back to the story. <sighs> There's so much, guys. Tell of, Amen. What's that? Tell of the temple. What? Tell of the church that you went into. Which one? With the columns. I'm getting there. Okay. You're getting ahead of me. I'm just trying to keep you on the and right I track. Appreciate, I appreciate you staring. <laughs> I really thought I was just going to be a puddle of tears. I don't know how. I don't have any tears left in my body. I'm so dried out. I hardly slept. But that team, them same three, the same ones that were fighting the same, the same statue that I was fighting, the same idea that I was fighting, it got revealed that, wow, they're here. And I said, stop, guys. I said, I need to tell you a story and about the fight and about the battle. And how, and because the one girl on the trip said, why am I going on this trip? I don't even want to go anymore. I've been three times and nothing ever happens. Something good happened with you, Mark, three years ago, but the last two times I went, nothing happened. She was there because her eyes needed to be open. A revelation was revealed to her that night. The second church sent a member that was crushed. 34-year member in another church and basically got run out. Awesome man. He needed healing. I shared the vision. I shared the problem with them. And their eyes lit up. And we talked and prayed till 3 o'clock in the morning. And I knew that it was, we were starting to repeat ourselves. I went to bed to try to sleep. I haven't slept in days. Ended up praying till 6 in the morning, maybe 6.30, and they woke me up at 7 for that group. She got completely, her eyes open. She knows what's going on. She is so thankful that she went on that trip. He has started this process of healing and coming through the process. He realized where we need to go. Okay? This is all the things that's going on of the Holy Spirit working inside of each and every one of us if we'll just listen. And that was our motto all weekend long because that's what I was speaking on was pray, 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 pray. Not Big, grandiose prayers, short prayers, concise prayers. Lord, what can I do? Where can I go? Where do I need to be? I run around for 20 minutes looking for a, uh, a string, string measure. And I just said, okay, practice what you preach, Mark. Lord, we're never going to get this job done. If you don't help me out, where's the string measure? Check your pocket. Yep, got it. Okay, let's go. <laughs> it's just, it just not a vulnerable voice, but just check your pocket. God is with us in every little detail of our lives. He brought... Seven people together that really didn't know each other. Three churches together that didn't know each other. We ended up celebrating like there was no celebration whatsoever. We felt, and, and, and Luke going. Luke wasn't supposed to, I mean, Luke ain't a missionary guy. He's not going to go on a missionary. I thought, okay, Luke, you want to go? You go. He was invaluable. We had to rewire the building. We couldn't get welders to run. We had, Luke could fix welders, and Luke could, and him and I rewired, and we worked. And, and, and if you got a roadside bomb, Luke can, you know, figure it out because that's what he did in the military he was awesome don't tell him i said that because i give him a big head um but he was helpful and he was great even speaking before christ so he come for a purpose because we would have never got done what we did we built uh we were about ready to build start on the sanctuary and i didn't want to start but the money had come in and let it go and i thought lord i'm gonna go down there and uh, no i shouldn't say that i'm being petty i still wanted the training center in shala and I thought it's not going to happen because the money wasn't coming in. And I got a call in October of last year saying, come on down, Mark, and, and do some mission work. We really, we really need what you bring to the table. Come on down. And I said, okay, and this is 2019. I pretty much put the training center on the wall, put it on the back shelf. So, Mark, you must have ate a bad burrito. And I said, okay, that's fine. I said, uh, by the way, what are we going to do? And he says, we're going to start building a training center. Three years earlier. And I thought, okay, but that's not going to be in the city of Shella. God, that training center needs, you, you, you screwed up. The tra no, they're, they're going to put it in Guatemala. God, you need, it needs to go over here in Shella because that's where I was when I got the vision. But God never told me it was going in the city of Shella. He just said, you're going to be building a training center. And he gave me a vision of, of white columns and squares and, and junk on the floor. And, and I'd never been in this building in my life, guys. Never. Never been to the second floor. And I was sort of grumpy going down there. I'm going to, okay, I'll help you build your little training center. Then we're going to go build a real training center over here in Shallow, the one that's, that God revealed to me. I opened that door. There were the columns. There were the squares. There was the windows. And it was a wreck, just like me. Three years earlier, God revealed what we were going to do. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and when he was going to do it with three people that had to fight against one problem. I really thought Isai, who was our
pastor down there uh, over about 100 and some churches. I thought he, he was even Nebuchadnezzar pulling Jim's string. And when I stood there, my vision, not this vision, my eyes, my eyes still are bad. The vision was completely clear of what God wanted done. He, and Nebuchadnezzar was not the problem. It was bound to the statue. The statue was the problem. The three churches come together. We visited seven churches that, that came to, to us for blessing. The, the, the combination of things that happened and put together, and Patricia was there on the other trip. She's seen the prayers and the time that we did and the time that we had. And I shared that vision with her and you and anybody else here that would give me two minutes to listen to watch God's hand come fully around and complete. I hope you guys understand. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Confess your sins. Listen to Christ. Get things ready. The Holy Spirit is moving all the time between me and him. And, and I notice right on here, it doesn't even say sermon. I don't think you thought we was going to have a sermon today, did you? <laughs> the music was perfect. Jolie's being spoken to from across town. The people that we raised up for this trip. Seven people that didn't even know each other. And put this plan into action. And the money raised, I thought, you know, we got enough money to do these floors and steels. I, doing the cuck, I thought, we're five, six, seven hundred dollars short. A friend of mine called me up and said, hey, you want to miss a trip? And I said, yeah. He says, I want to bring you some money. He flew up five hundred dollars. Another friend stopped, a good friend, dropped me off some money. I said, use this towards your mission trip. We had exactly to the dime what we needed to buy the materials, the steel, the wood, plus we had our, and, and the, that board, plus all the electrical, plus Luke. And I came home to bring you guys your change. It was $12. Uh, <laughs> that's how close the budget was. That's all I got left. I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So guys, just listen. I mean, when God is preparing me in Kansas and having me study the book of Hebrews, I'm like, why am I in Hebrews for a year, Lord? We used it in Kansas. I didn't even know I was going to Kansas. I really didn't think I was going back in 2020 to build a training center because the wheels had never gotten put into motion. But he's got me studying the Holy Spirit for six months, and that message resonated so well that churches left churches to go to churches to hear it, and it just kept building and building and building. God will use, if he can use me, Second to the chief of sinners, because Paul says he's the first of the sinners. He can use you. You guys are smarter. You guys are nicer. You guys don't want to fight the drop of a hat. He can use you. But now we got a problem. I need more missionaries. I need more money. Uh, $12 ain't going to get us very far. So put it in your heart now to be praying for next year's trip. We've got to add bathrooms to this training center and uh, some laundry uh, to get to wrap this project up to bring. Because, yes, it's great, Gene, and now you guys know the goal is village to village, and you guys seen that mountainous village. Children came for miles, miles in the mountains that have nothing. Rags and riches. They fed us a beautiful meal inside what would be a chicken coop. Their bathroom is down the hill, a little hole in the floor. They live so rough, but their joy is so great. They couldn't honor us enough. And we're driving out three miles away, and here's this little girl that had come all the way down to see the missionaries. And they laughed, and they played. And the, we probably gave them more joy that four hours we were there. How are we doing on time, brother? You're fine. Oh, we got to wrap up. Mm -hmm. There was a young girl outside. Everything I was praying, I don't know why I didn't pray for a million dollars. I could have finished this thing. Everything we were praying for was coming true, was happy, and, and people were getting healed and saved and moving forward. It was awesome. A little girl outside, and I tried to hand her a balloon, and she took it. And, and, ah! She went on the ground. Ah! She hit her head into the tree, into the wall behind her. Violet, Violet, probably about 12 years old. None of the other kids would talk to her. None of them around. She was just outside. She just paced. Growl. I'm like, whoa. I says, Lord, a deaf mute spoke to me on my very first mission trip. I hadn't spoken in 15 years. Lord, you knocked me off a wall, allowed me to fall off a wall. I never got hurt. I'm going to go pray for this little banshee tiger. And I went over there. She just looked at me, eyes you could see. 
You can see all the way to hell. She had no love. She had no soul. She was empty. I couldn't touch her. She wouldn't let me. I just held my hand up and prayed. And I prayed and I prayed. No, let me tell the truth. I turned my back on her. I walked inside because all them kids and all them adults, they love me and they're clapping and they're cheering and they're praising the Lord. And why I'm sitting there going, the Lord says, what are you doing? You've wrestled deer. You've taken down fish. You know there's a little girl out there hurting. So I just quietly got through the crowd, went outside where she was. She growled at me again. And I just kept praying. I kept praying. Before we left that church, she was inside singing, enjoying. Luke went over to her. Luke Ames went over to her to put a little sticker on her shirt. And I said, Luke, be careful. And she says, she says why? She's a beautiful little girl. And put that on her shirt. And she smiled. If that doesn't tell you that there's a reason to travel 3,000 miles, spend hard-earned money, I don't know if the girl was demon-possessed, but all I know is that she was one violent little girl. And she was praising Jesus when we left town. Amen. If God can me, use me, he can use you. Thank you for your financial support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for trusting a crazy guy like me to go to Guatemala to lead a team to get something done for Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.